They say every road goes somewhere, but that isn't so. Roads are just there. It is we who do the moving. They stop where we stop, not caring whether we follow them to our chosen destination or into the twilight zone. Sign of the fence. Uh, yeah. Sorry to disturb you. Uh, my car broke down. Can I use your phone? No phones here. Oh, everyone's within shouting distance of one another. Uh, listen, it's pretty cold. Can we talk inside? garage in town? Oh, haven't much use for cars either, I'm afraid. Now, 40, 50 miles up the coast road, there's a garage. I'm afraid right now that car of mine wouldn't get me across the street. Well, I used to be pretty good with my tractor's engine. Maybe tomorrow I'll take a look at yours, huh? Evening, Mr. Cooper James. Teddy. Hello. My name's Teddy. What's yours? Dennis Barrows. Dr. Barrows, actually. What's a doctor? You're kidding. Um, well, I, I help sick people. I help make them better. I give them medicine. Oh, you mean like aspirin? Kitty? Yeah. So it must be wrong for you to be out this hour of night, huh? Oh, just Katie. She has a little fever. Mom says it's probably nothing serious. Well, I hope to Seth she's right. Hate for the whole town to come down with something. Yeah, we just ran out of aspirin. Young man, doctor, why don't you just have a seat? I'll get you in a minute. I don't suppose there's a hotel anywhere in town. We got a spare room. Well, we do. Teddy, why don't you tell your ma that I said that this young man needs a place to sleep tonight? OK. May the beacon pass you by. You as well. Just our way of saying good night here. McCormick James? Yes. I'm Dennis Barrows. Your your son told you about my problem? Yes. Yes, he did. And I have to tell you, mister. Well, nothing personal. I just don't like to have strangers around my children. I can understand that. And I don't like being anywhere where I'm not welcome, so believe me, if I had any choice. All right, all right. Mr. Cooper James says it's okay. I, uh, I heard your daughter is ill, and, you know, maybe I can help. I I'm a doctor. No, thank you. It's, uh, she'll be fine.
baby. Come in. Tell me, is there something wrong with that lighthouse or what? Teddy, what's the matter? Come on now, you can tell me. I'm a good listener. It's my sister. Mom thinks she's going to be the one to die. What are you talking about? I, I thought you told me that it wasn't serious. Mom says she's already getting a lot worse. I feel so bad. Mom says it's because of the light. But I don't know. Maybe... Maybe it's all my fault. I had this fight with her last month. And I thought... I thought I wish she was dead. Teddy. Teddy, it isn't necessarily anybody's fault if somebody gets sick. You said you help sick people get better. Can you help Katie, please? Well, I can sure try. Will she be OK? Yeah, looks like a minor respiratory infection. I gave her a... I gave her some medicine. She'll be all right now. Well, come on. We better get out of here before Mom finds out. She'll be awful mad. Why? Well, if it was Katie that was meant to go since she was sick, well, now it'll be like we disobeyed it. It? Teddy? What do you mean? starting already. What is? Out there. What are they doing? They're waiting for the beacon to take somebody. I guess they'll be disappointed now. The beacon? Uh-huh. Teddy. Teddy, why would a lighthouse want your sister to die? Just pick somebody. It shines on a house, and pretty soon somebody in the house dies. If no one gets sick, then there's an accident. Now it'll be mad at us for what we did. It takes good care of us. It doesn't ask for much. But instead of being grateful... Wait, 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 wait a minute. It, it takes care of you. You mean somebody inside of it? Seth, he protects us. He watches over us from up there. Take me to the beacon, Teddy. I want to talk to Seth. No, we can't. Nobody can. Nobody's allowed in the beacon, ever. Yeah, who says? Mr. Cooper James. He takes care of it. I've got to go to that lighthouse, Teddy. It was kind of you to come over. What sort of kin would I be if I didn't, Marianne? I'll take you. Through here. William, why Katie? Why my dear, poor Katie? Marianne, it's not for us to question Seth's will. He knows what's best for us. He's always known. Of course he does. I'm sorry, William. Katie? Seems to be dropping. There was a nice man, Mama. Teddy brought him.
Where is this Seth? His spirit is always listening. You mean he's dead? Not really. He was alive like us a long time ago. And he still is alive. In spirit. In the beacon. And from up there, he protects and guides and keeps us happy. Teddy! What has this man done to you? Marianne, take the boy home. Yes, sir. Teddy! Mom, he's a nice man. He helped Katie. So, you're looking for Seth James, are you? He was a lighthouse keeper here uh, almost 200 years ago. of you are his descendants. Yeah, he was a father of us all. In more ways than one. He founded this town, loved it, loved its people. And then when the boats took to other ports, he, he taught his people how to live off the land. There were hard times, not for the weak. But our ancestors flourished, all because Seth showed them the way. And then, years later, on his deathbed, he just decided that he wasn't going to go. At least, not like men are supposed to. He swore that here, in the beacon, his spirit would keep watch over us job of our family for generations is to take care of that beacon. You mean you turn on the light? You control it? That's blasphemy. Once a year, I check the mechanism. It is Seth who starts the light. It's over a hundred years old. How do you know the mechanism isn't faulty? The light just going on randomly. Seth guides its aim. Yeah? And does Seth arrange the rest of it? The accident, if the intended victim doesn't die as a... You are speaking of things you know nothing about. We've lived here for generations. Independent of the outside world, or just about. We're protected. Our needs are met. All because of the power of the beacon makes it so. But our bloodlines must remain strong. So when the beacon asks for anything... We give it gladly. It's ridiculous. You're crazy. All of you. You're out of your minds. Don't you see the inbreeding here? Once years ago, the beacon chose a soul. But somehow, the chosen one survived. We fell on hard times. Harsh cold, raging wind. Bellwether nearly, nearly turned into a ghost town. What are you doing? Get away from me! That year when the town almost died out, our ancestors swore that the beacon would never be denied again. And it won't. No one will ever escape its will. But Katie did! She lived! Light has decreed a death, and what is decreed must come to pass. You were in that house when the light came upon it. You must serve. You see, Doctor, you kept the beacon from Katie. You must atone. No one will ever escape the beacon again. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, my God. No. No. Please. No. No.
Yeah. Hold it, hold it. Wait a minute. Why do you people think that because it's 9 a.m. in New York, everyone west of the Hudson is also awake? Do you think Greenwich Mean Time was invented just to irritate you? It does. I am listening! <sighs> no. No. No, damn it, that's not the deal we made. Either we do the deal we agreed upon or forget it. Gus. Don't talk to me about ethical behavior. You don't even know what ethical behavior is. You can't even spell it. E-T-H-I... What is it, Gus? Fine. Okay? Fine. I'll see you in court. You like my attorney? He eats human flesh! Oh, no! Gus. Are you okay? Yeah, fine, sure. Just, I've had these soldiers a long time. Oh. They must be worth a lot of money. No, they cost about a dime a piece. I bought maybe four or five a month when I was a kid. I used to bury them in the backyard and dig them up later. It was like finding buried treasure. They're just a bunch of toy soldiers. You can always buy some new ones. But they don't make them anymore, right? Gus. Gus. You know, I really liked your lecture last night. And I really do. Yeah, I know. You've got all my books. I do have all your books. I even have the first one, the one that's out of print. I found it in a used bookshop. I have to go. I have to go. Go where? Ohio. Ohio? What's in Ohio? He had to go back. It was that simple. Back to the place where his anger had first taken root. Back to find the turning point which had set him on the road to success and loneliness. Because here, in this small Ohio town, lived the shadows of the boy he used to be and the man he could have become. Gus Rosenthal is returning home to the Twilight Zone. Here you go. Thanks, pal. Welcome, pal.
you took the comic book without paying for it, Gus? Why do you do this to us, Gus? People think we can't afford to buy you anything. They think we can't take care of you. How do you think that makes us feel? I'm sorry. And the fights you get into with Jack Wheel. The fights? We're, We're talking about stealing. Why do you steal, Gus? Are you trying to get our attention? Well, you've done it. That's for sure. Is this what you want? I won't do it again. You won't do it again. You've said that one too many times. You know what I have to do. Go ahead. Side. Hold it! They're gone. Here. Thanks. Let's go see your parents and get those bruises cleaned up. That's okay. My dad's at the store. He's busy. It's all right. 
I'll go with you. Come on. By the way, my name is Mr. Rosenthal. Hey, that's my name, too, Gus Rosenthal. Well, that is a coincidence. Nice to meet you, Gus. Be with you in a second. Gus. Not again. Who was it this time? Jack Wielden again. I wasn't doing anything. You weren't doing anything for the last five times. It wasn't times. his fault. I was passing by the playground, and I saw these kids just jump out and attack him. They pushed him off the swing he was on. I had to chase them away. He didn't do a thing. Gus was minding his own business. Go in the back and wash up, OK? I appreciate what you did for my son. Anyone would have done the same thing. Maybe. Maybe not. He's gotten so wild lately. Last week, his friend, Johnny Lumley, just like that, out of the blue, he pushes him off a garage roof. When I was a kid, I jumped off all sorts of things. I used to pretend I could fly. I'd use the bushes to break my fall. It was fun, a thrill. Maybe Gus thinks it's fun. Maybe he thought Johnny would enjoy it, too, if he'd only try it. That's, uh, that's interesting. I would have never looked at it that way. Have we met Mr... Rosenthal, Harry Rosenthal. Rosenthal? I thought we were the only Rosenthals in town. I'm from Los Angeles. I'm a writer. I'm here doing some research at the library for a book about Ohio. I'm staying at the Claremont Hotel. A writer? I'm pleased to meet you, Harry. I'm Lou. Good meeting you, Lou. Really good. Thanks, Mr. Rosenthal. If that had hit, my dad would have been real mad. I know. He was. Huh? Never mind. Forget it. You like comics? Yeah, sure. Why? Well, I was just down at the newsstand. They got the new doll man, Blue Beetle, All Star. With the Justice Society of America? I was thinking. What are we waiting for? You're a writer? What do you write? Books, movies, tele, radio. Mostly movies, though. Wow. Did you write The Thief of Baghdad? No, but I wish I had. How about Dumbo? Did you write Dumbo? No, afraid not. I don't think you would have heard of what I've written, Gus. How'd you get to be a movie writer? Well, when I was growing up... It's funny, I can't exactly recall the moment. But about your age, I made a... a decision. I decided I was gonna show all the kids who made fun of me, all the kids who beat me up, I was gonna show them I was somebody. I was going to be a big person, make lots of money, be important. And you did, huh? You showed him? Yeah, I did. Trouble is, I was so busy showing him, I never bothered to make much of a life for myself. Bet you wouldn't do anything that silly, Gus, huh? I guess not. You really like those comics, don't you? Yeah. I thought maybe when I grew up, I could be a cartoonist. It's good thinking, Gus. There's a lot of money in it. It's fun, too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's fun, too. Come on, let's go. Oh, wait. 
Mr. Rosenthal. We'll bury it now, and maybe next week we'll dig it up. And it'll be like finding Long John Silver's lost treasure. Yeah, how'd you know that? Because I read Treasure Island, just like you. Will you read me another story, Mr. Rosenthal? Okay. Come on over here. All right. Now about this one. It's called 12 Hours to Live by Jack Williamson. It's about the space pirate who captures this man and his wife. Yeah. And he offers the man the choice of opening two boxes. In one is the man's wife with only 12 hours of air to breathe. Help me, help me. Yeah. <laughs> but in the other is a space fungus that'll eat him alive if he opens it. Oh, no, don't open it, don't open it, oh, no. Gus for lunch! Gus for lunch! Oh, God! Oh, God! He's having Gus for lunch! I can't stand it! Oh, oh. Come on, Gussie! Gus for nerve! Oh, my God! Oh, he can't! Oh, no! I can't stand it! Come on. Pretty good. You play a lot? Not much. The guys will let me play with them. They say I'm a runt. Yeah, well, I'm a runt, too. It doesn't matter where it's spit. If you ask me, we're the normal height for humans. The rest of those guys are just mutants, right? Right. Right. Come in. Just who the hell do you think you are anyway? The boy already has a father, or hadn't you noticed? I appreciate what you did for him after the fight, but that does not give you the right to interfere in my family. He's been calmer lately, hasn't he? No more fights, no more stealing. That's not the point! He just needs someone to talk to, someone to listen to him. He's got... Me! He doesn't have you! Why don't you try to listen to him for a little while? Don't you think I try? Don't you think I try to understand him, to feel what he feels? But I can't. He's angry. And he gets angrier the older he gets. And I can't control him anymore. I'm sorry, I had no right to talk to you that way. It's not your fault. I was jealous of your friendship with him. You see, I get angry too. But I let it out. Maybe I shouldn't. But I do. I can't keep it inside. It's just the way I am. He's a good kid, Lou. He just got a little lost there for a while, but he's back on track. And you can keep him there. I, I've got to leave. My research is finished. It's just that he reminded me of myself at that age. I was a problem kid, too. My father and I, we just never talked. And then in my teens, he passed away. And it was too late. Sorry. He was a good man. A gentle man. And all I ever wanted to tell him was... Dad, you'd be proud of me now. I may not be the happiest guy in the world, but I turned out to be a good guy. And what I do, I do well. And I love you. 
And why did you go away and leave me like that? I'm sorry, Lou. I never meant to interfere with your family. You're a good man, Harry. A fine man. Hello, Gus. Did you see? There's a new Lash LaRue movie playing. You want to go see it with me? I'm afraid I can't. I have to go away. You mean you got to go to the library? No. I mean I have to leave, return to Los Angeles. You'll be back, though. You won't be gone long. I can't promise that. I don't know when I'll be able to get back. This is difficult to explain. Look, I'm sick. I don't belong here. I've come someplace I shouldn't have. I've broken some kind of law. I'm very, very sick. I have to go back. You, you mean you've got some kind of germ? Well, that's easy. I'll take you to my dad's doctor, and he'll fix you up. That won't help, Gus. Why not? It just won't. Well, then take me with you. I can't. Well, sure you can. I can help you write, and I can help you with your research. I'll even go to school. I promise. I'll go every day. I'll even study to be a cartoonist. I promise. I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. Where I'm going, you just can't follow. Gus, look at me. Look at me. I'm sick. Can't you see that? You don't care. You don't care what happens to me. Gus, I do care. That's not true. I have to go. You don't care. You don't love me. I do care. Let me go. Gus. I don't need your help. I'll go away, be a big person, make lots of money, be important. And someday I'll run into you. And you'll come up to shake my hand. And then I'll spit on you. I'll spit right in your face. And then I'll beat you up. You'll see. Gus. Mr. Rosenthal. I remember when I left me. It wasn't them. It wasn't any of them. It was Mr. Rosenthal. It was me.
It's rather bittersweet how we spend so much time trying to justify ourselves to the shadows of those who are long gone. And even if they were alive, would they remember? Would they recall what they had said or done that made you spend the rest of your life proving yourself? And if you could go back, wouldn't you learn that you were always the master of your fate? Where to, pal? To the airport. Jack, you're Jack Wielden. Yeah, you know me? No. Not anymore. And if you learned that great truth, wouldn't it free you of a useless burden? Dead cargo from the Twilight Zone?